have to pull that down. This one right there. Okay. I don't know really where I'm going to go with this, but I tell you, the only thing I can say is the, the word that was on my heart today and that has ministered to me lately is the word patience. Now, I never have been one to have a lot of patience, and it's, and it's showed up on me a lot of times. It's told off on me so many times, you know. So I, I just thought I'd just go over and see what Webster said about it, because I don't, you know, I think I think I know, you know, I always thought I know what it means, you know, everybody seems to know what it means. But you know what Webster had to say about it? He said, patience is bearing trials without murmuring, and it's not easily made angry, and it's calm, and it's not hasty. That's a pretty good virtue right there, isn't it? <clears throat> You know, that kind of reminds me, you know, about the wisdom of the Lord. He said, the wisdom of the Lord is first pure. And he, he said, it's easily entreated, you know, without respect or persons. And it goes on to explain it in full. Can't remember the exact quote, but um, that, that ministered to me. Um, so I looked over there and I seen in Isaiah, where it said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. So, it's talking about waiting upon the Lord. Now, there's, you know, there's two different ways we wait upon the Lord. We wait for His coming. We watch and we wait for His coming. But at the same time, when we pray, we wait upon the Lord as well, you see, because I think a lot of times that because of uh, a lack of patience, we faint in our mind. Yes. We live in a day where it's everything like fast food, fast messaging, instant messaging. Uh, everything's got to happen within a certain time frame. We expect it to be that way, or else we'll get impatient with it and walk away. Right. You know? But that's not the way of wisdom in the Lord. You see, the Lord, he, in the very beginning, he said that whenever he created the heavens and the earth, he had already implemented the plan of the of plan of salvation before the world was ever even formed. And he was going to bring it about in due time. He said, it, he said he, uh, as he's sending forth the Christ, the Son of God, the Holy One, the Redeemer of our soul, the blessed Savior that we worship and we, we, we come to know. He said, I, he, said it's, he said, I'll do it. He said, it'll be line upon line. Thank you, John. Yeah. He, said, he said, I'll do it in line upon line. Yeah. And uh, he, he, he repeated himself again. He said, line upon line again. He said, uh, here a little and there a little. And then he repeated himself again. He said, here a little and there a little. And then he went about, went about to say again, line upon line, precept upon precept. You know? And he, he put down his precepts in his word, knowing that these precepts were going to be an eternal word that would last as long as the world would last, that they'd be able to look at these precepts that had been set forth in the wisdom of God and to be able to learn more about his nature and about his character. Yeah. It doesn't matter what generation you was born in, you'd be able to look at these precepts and to be able to learn of the character and the very nature of God Almighty. Yes, hallelujah. Glory to God, and it would be imputed unto us. Yeah a strength in our very being and give us a, a hope and give us life and, and give us encouragement, you see. So, and, and, and see, all that, I know a lot of times I get tripped up when I try to make notes. I'm going to do the best I can, but if I stammer, stammer around here, I may just throw them away. But uh, <laughs> I, I'd rather just feel the Spirit of God more than anything else, you know. 
But I'll tell you what, it's in, when it got talking about uh, patience, you get to looking through the Word, and, uh, you know, it says, in your patience, uh, possess you your soul. Uh, uh, wrong, uh, no, no, no. Let, me, let me just read a few of these right quick if I can without getting in trouble here. Let's see. Uh, I didn't have to, I didn't really have a chance to do it justice, but I I went, I went I ran through this morning and I can jot down a few things. Uh, now one of the things that came ready to my mind uh, was over in uh, Isaiah 40. Well I think I've done read that. Or did I? I don't know. That's what I get into for trying to follow notes. <laughs> so, um, anyway, in Isaiah um, 39, um, it's Isaiah 40 and verse 31. It says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Now, that's a promise. And that's a, that's a settled word of God right there. It's forever settled in heaven. That's the truth. Okay, let me see what else we got here. Oh. <clears throat> Let's go over here to Romans 8.25 and see what I had there. Let's see. This is an instant day of instant. Get it right now. <laughs> Gotta know it. Hurry. Hurry, hurry. <laughs> uh, let's see. There it is. He sure showed up. There it is. Oh, here we go. 825. Well, I got this thing here keeps messing it up, so I got something back down here. Oh. Seven. It says uh, to them, uh, it was talking about uh, after the hardness and, and, and infinite heart of truth up, up as thyself, wrath against the day of wrath, <clears throat> and the revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patient continuance and well doing seek for glory and honor and immortality and eternal life unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Uh, tribulation names on every soul of man that doeth evil and said the Jew first and then to the Gentiles. And then what I say, 825. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fixing to throw these notes away. I see. Uh, <laughs> Mm. I can come get you. Uh, <laughs> I can come get you. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I don't know. I, I wish I could just settle down and just do it right. But just take your time. I don't know what you're doing. Relax. Right? Okay, 825. There it is. It says, uh, <laughs> but if we hope for that which we see not, then we then do we with patience wait for it, you know. So um, there's so much to be said about patience. And I didn't realize how much was in here. Well, I think patience is just all over here. It's all in here. Um, I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna quit following these notes. <laughs> uh, but let me read from Second Peter first before I do that. Um, Peter's in there somewhere. It says, and besides all this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, 
and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Uh, <clears throat> I guess one of the things that really I got to looking at, I got to looking about the parable over in Luke, when it was talking about the, the parable of the soul. And you know, that's pretty well covers the whole scheme of life. As we know it, uh, you know, it talked about the, the uh, well, it's going to get down to patience. I'll tell you where patience comes in here, right here, but I want to tell you. Uh, whenever it talked about the word, uh, you know, the soul went forth, so the word, and it said when it uh, uh, fell by the wayside, it talked about a trodden down hearer of the word. Now, whenever you start looking at a person that's in that condition, yeah. they've heard it, they've been there, they've done that, they've heard the word so many times, they already know what you're gonna say before you even say it. Right. And they really don't care about hearing it, but they'll sit there and they'll listen. But all the while, they're just, uh, they're not receiving what's being said and taking it to heart because <clears throat> they have received, they've heard that word so many times and rejected it that, that the heart begins to harden time and time again. Every time that the, the word of the Lord comes to them and they reject it, it hardens their heart, you see. And then they find themselves in a little worse condition than what they were before they rejected it. But thank God, in his mercy and grace, he'll come again and he'll, he'll minister to us again through his mercy and grace because that's his nature, that's, his, that's the goodness of the Lord. But you see, the Lord's never taken away our choices. He's never taken away our, our will. It's been up to us to be able to die to our own will. Try it. It's been up to us to Make that right choice and to choose God, choose life rather than death. Uh, you know, I look at the, I look over there one day, I was thinking about Pharaoh, and the Lord had talked to Moses, and he said, I'm going to send you over there to confront Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. Amen. Now, if you want to think about patience, now those people, they were free people. They were free. They were children of God. They were the chosen generation. And they were free. The Lord said beforehand, he said that, he told Abraham, he said they're going to go into, they're going to go into bondage and they're going to, and they're going to be there for 400 years. Yeah. 400 years. And then I'm going to send a deliverer to deliver them, you see. Now, how many... People lived and died during that 400 years while they were waiting on the promise of the Lord. But yet the Lord, he didn't leave them out because they could still be partakers of it whenever it was all said and done. But they would, they'd still be a partaker of it. Yeah. But you see, after 400 years, on the, on the time that was already been uh, foretold and then prophesied, uh, here comes the deliverer in Moses. Now Moses didn't want to go, <laughs> but he didn't have no choice in this matter because what the Lord already knew his heart. And see, he was born. He was born for that purpose in life. Whenever all the Chamel children were being destroyed, and, and there was, it looked like Moses was a good candidate to, to be amongst the ones that was destroyed. The hand of God was upon him then and upon his mother, and she spared his life because he had a plan and a purpose for him. And as he raised him up, and he trained him up in the ways of Egypt so he'd get his education. He'd learn about military strategies. He'd learn about education, anything that pertained to anything that would make a man successful in this walks of life. But that wasn't enough for Moses. 
Oh, he had the riches. He had the, he had the power uh, uh, in, the, in the natural, but that wasn't enough for this man. This man had a hunger down in his soul. And the, and, the, and the natural things of this world could not feed him. It could not satisfy him. He said he chose to suffer the afflictions with his people right. rather than enjoy the riches of the, of, of the Egypt, you see. And so Moses had to follow his heart. Even though he did so reluctantly, he still had to follow his heart. You see, and the Lord used him. And then the patience, and then the you know, patience is being exercised here. The Lord brought about and established Lord, his word. And that's what he'll always do, even though it tarry. Yeah, even though it tarry, it will come to pass. It will come to pass, but it takes patience, you see. It takes patience to let the Lord build something in us to take, uh, it takes patience for the Lord to get it in alignment so that it will be for the very best results that it can be because everything God does is perfect. Yes. Oh, and it's pure. Yes. And it's holy and it's enduring. Yes. Because that's just the way he is because he's an eternal God. Everything about God is eternal. Yes. Everything about him is forever and everlasting. Yes. And it doesn't wire out. And it doesn't fade away. And it doesn't pass away. And the work that he's doing in us is that eternal work. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I praise yeah. God for that. Yeah. That he would be mindful of us. And that he would reconcile us back to himself. Glory to God through the plan, the perfect plan of salvation that he set forth. And then he set, and he set, and he set the <laughs> body in order. He set it up just exactly the way it should function with him being the head. Yeah. Lord God, I'm thankful he is the head of the body today. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's given us a part. We all have a part in the body of Christ. Yeah. Oh, God, it can cause us, Lord, uh, just to rejoice in him. And it causes us to be blessed, so blessed, so blessed. But yet at the same time, oh, Lord God, we know that he is our head. Uh, and we follow our head today. I praise him for that. And he's able to give us that that we stand in need of. He's the one that gives the increase. Hallelujah. He's the one that's faithful. And, and, and he just as faithful as he set the stars in the heavens and, and the moon and the sun. And he said uh, for them to uh, come up at a certain time and to go down at a certain time yes. and to abide there and to be able to uh, function, to give light, Lord, uh, and to give uh, uh, for seasons and times. And then he also, he spoke to the sea. And he said, here's your boundary. He said, you can go this far, and you can go no further. Hallelujah. And so they obeyed him. Glory to God. Are oh, you talking about our way to the mighty God? Hallelujah. I'm thankful today that he was mindful of our needs. Hallelujah. And he was mindful of us. And that he would, he would share his inheritance with us. He would make us heirs and joint heirs with the Lord Jesus Christ and give us the privilege of prayer that we could go to him in a time of need and that we could bring our petition boldly before the throne of grace that we could find grace and help and mercy in a time of need. And I thank you for that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I didn't know I was going to go this way, but I'm thankful for it. I praise God for it. And I know. Oh, that he will, that he will give us that and we stand in need of he'll feed us. Just like he took care of the children of Israel over there in the wilderness. They came out of Egypt uh, with a great deliverance, and that should have been a, uh, that should have been something that was recognized by each and every heart that was in that company. As they stood that day with their loins girded and, and their feet shot, and, and, and as they were ready to march out of Egypt, whenever they was given the command, and whenever the command came, they marched out, and there was not a feeble one among them. Amen. The power of God was working in their life and establishing them. Hallelujah. In their part in the scheme of things. Hallelujah. As he brought him forth with a mighty, with a mighty hand. And as I started to say a full time, uh, whenever I was asking, uh, why did the Lord tell Moses when he went to Pharaoh in the beginning that he was going to harden his heart? 
He said, I want you to go and tell him to let my people go. But he said, he won't let them go. He said, I'm going to harden his heart that he won't let them go. And I said, why? Why, Lord, why would you do that? And he said, well, and he explained it to me. He said, whenever my word came forth, he said, it was like the fire. It was like the fire of God. And he said it was a fiery word to come forth. It was backed up by heaven itself. It was backed up by the highest power there is. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And then whatever uh, he spoke that to Pharaoh, Pharaoh didn't recognize the power of God. He didn't honor uh, the God of all the universe and the creator of all mankind. And he hardened his heart. And he rejected that word. And it hardened him. And he went about ten times. His heart was hardened over and over and over again. And so finally the Lord said, Now, now is the time. He said, Now I'm going to break him. I'm going to break him. Hallelujah. And that's whenever he said all the firstborn was going to die. He said if they didn't put the blood, if the blood was not applied to the doorpost and the little, he said whenever I come, when I pass through, he said all the firstborn is going to die. And that broke, that broke him. That broke Pharaoh. For they, it wasn't just, uh, the, it wasn't just uh, the the servants, but it was the hierarchy, and it was even the animals, the firstborn, uh, they all died uh, whenever there was, uh, the blood was not applied, glory to God, and that was the type, the precept the Lord was talking about a little while ago, about the precepts of the light of old man, and the, uh, the grace of God working in that, well, the patience in that. You see, and it taught us that unless we're covered by the blood of the Lamb, unless we have the blood applied to our life, Lord God, we will not make it. We will not make it. We'll die and go to a devil's hell. We will not make it in. But if we have the blood applied, we have going the right to the tree of life. I praise God that he'd wash us clean of our sins. Not only wash us clean, but he'd also wash our conscience clean. Hallelujah. We'd have no consciousness of sin. Hallelujah. Well, and I just, uh, uh, and I just wanted to say uh, that as we go on forward here, uh, we begin to talk about the, the sower a minute ago. And there was that man that was, had the hardened heart. It was, his heart was a trodden down heart. And it, it didn't matter what you could say to him. It didn't matter what you could uh, minister to him. It didn't matter how kind you was to him. It didn't matter how you helped him. It didn't matter if you ministered to him in worldly goods and, and showed kindness. And, and if, if you were a minister to him by the power of God, they just rejected him. Then just go to sleep while he's talking. And they didn't want to hear what you had to say, really, because they knew that they were going to get up and go their own way, and everything was going to remain the same in their life. There was no, no change going to take place. You can only harden your heart so many times. After a while, only the Lord knows. I don't. But the Lord knows when that last time comes, whenever you're going to be Whenever you're going to reject the word of God for the last time in your life and turn and go your own way. And there's not going to be any hope. There's not going to be any redemption for you anymore. He's our only hope. And then they talk about the one that fell on the rock. Uh, the seed that fell on the rock. It was a good seed. Nothing wrong with the seed. But you know that hardness of the, the, of the rock or that it fell on that, that he, he, he heard the word with gladness. He didn't put down any roots. He was just content about running around and rejoicing and praising God and just, uh, just getting in on the, uh, the good times and, and uh, uh, you know, just still saying, well, Lord, I'm going to give you this force of my life, but, uh, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to keep part of it back to myself. I can't, can't, can't give it all to you. I like the good part. But I don't know about the roots. Putting down the roots down, that takes time. That takes a lot of, that takes a lot out of your life. That takes a lot of, uh, you know, you get, you get so busy and uh, you got too much to do. I mean, I ain't got time to put down those roots, you know. 
and, and all, of, all that goodness and the good part and all that's good until the enemy comes in to try, uh, to try your heart. And, and the Lord allows it to, for him to try your heart. But if you don't have any roots, you don't have anything that will sustain you whenever the hard times come. You don't have anything to hold on to. You don't have that, that reality of knowing Christ for yourself, uh, of being able to uh, know him in that personal way that where you didn't have to be introduced to him by somebody else or some, something, some other way, but you was able to meet Christ face to face, heart to heart, and know that he was your Lord and your Savior, recognize him for who he was, the reality of walking in the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ yes. and having the, the Word of God being endured to your heart, the Word of God being endured to your soul. I, I stood in my prayer closet and I cried out and I said, Lord, I feel like I've missed it. I got so busy. And I feel like I said, Lord, I, want, I, I, I so desperately need uh, to, to know that you know I appreciate all the blessings that you bestowed upon me and all of the goodness and the mercy that you bestowed upon me. I don't want to come before you with a great heart, but I need to be made whole in my spirit and in my soul. I need to be made whole. I, I want to be able to know in my heart, come what may, come what may that I know. Lord, that, I, that my hope and my trust and my and my life is your or my life. That I that I'm not looking for a piece of you. I'm looking for all of you. Looks like you're looking for all of me. I'm looking for all of you. And you know the Lord's gracious to come to you. I tell you and to restore you. Lord God, and then I thought about the one that fell among the thorns. There was the ones that received the word gladly, and they didn't necessarily fall away, but I tell you, they, they never really brought any fruit to perfection because they had too many things to do. How many of us have ever said, no, I've said it. God, you're going to have to take a number. How many said, God, you're going to have to take a number? That don't work. It don't work that way. He's got to be first. Yes. He's got to be. We've got to honor him and put him first. He said if we will acknowledge him in all of our ways, that he can perfect us, he can make us whole in Jesus' name. Yes. Hallelujah. And then there was a one. You know, we miss out on so many blessings whenever we're in that shape because there's so many hidden treasures that the Lord wants to share with us and he wants to reveal to us. There is so much goodness and, and that's more precious than silver and gold uh, you know, that perishes and, and it's something that will abide with us, like we talk talking about, abide with us until the very end. But then it talked about the ones, that, the one that fell in the good ground and it said these were they that out of an honest and a good heart, and with patience, with patience, they begin to bring forth fruit. You know, how many, how many of you ever went out and tried to throw a plant a seed in the ground and stand there over it and pat your foot and say, now grow seed, grow, grow. I command you to grow. I command you to bring forth fruit. It don't work that way. There's a process involved in a natural process involved in it. Yes. That's where the patience comes in at. The patience. Okay. I praise God that he'll teach us and show us where we go wrong yes. and correct us. And, you know, we've all got to, the Lord began to give me a very sober, very sober in, inside of how serious it is for us to take our calling and election and be sure of it yes. before the Lord and be faithful in it. And he's able to take that faithfulness and that patience and 
he's able to make it into a mighty, mighty work. It causes us to be able to be who he ordained us to be, who he pre predestined us to be in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's able to do that. And you know, we all know, we all feel in our spirit that time as we know it, you know, in this world, I just feel it in my spirit that there's only a little time left before we make our choices and we make our decisions on this side of the rapture, on this side of the grave. After that, there won't be any more decisions. All the decisions have been made. All the choices have been made. There's no more. There's no more way. You can't go back and change anything. It'll stand. It'll stand the way it is. And we'll stand before God. And it's a very sobering thing. Very sobering to realize that we had it all. The Lord gave us, he said, I give you all things that pertain to life and godliness in Christ Jesus. He said, I enable you. He said, in yourself you can do nothing. He said, I'll do it for you. I'll do it in you. And it would be a, such a horrible thing to stand before God and say, I had it offered to me. I had it offered to me. And I rejected it. I didn't take it. I had my own life to live, my own interest. You know, whenever we pray, a lot of times, a lot of people don't realize it, but every time we pray, if we believe God hears us when we pray, we know he'll answer because he's promised that he will. He said, if you abide in me, I abide in you. He said, if you keep my word, he said, if you obey my commandments, he said, you ask what you will, and I'll do it. That's the word of God. And, you know, it's, it's just like when we pray. We may not see it happen overnight. We may not even see it happen for a number of years. How many times have people have fallen away from the Lord because they said, well, I prayed for that for five years and it never did happen. So I don't know, I just give up. I got mad at God and I turned and walked away. Just mad at God. I just said, well, if that's the best you can do, I can do, I'll just do what I want to do. You know, if you're not going to stand with me in this, I just, I don't, I don't want to hear anything else. You know, how many has ever had that attitude? Five years? Look how long Lord waited for the precious fruit. He's waiting for the latter rain for the precious fruit. You know, it could be a matter of years. It could be a matter of months. It could be a matter of days. But it's all in God's hands. If we can trust him, if we can trust God, and say, Lord, I don't know how long it'll take, but I know that whenever you're ready, it'll happen. Because I've asked in faith, believe it. I've obeyed the word of God, asking faith, believing. And whenever you bring it to pass, I'm going to rejoice in it. I'm going to dance. I'm going to dance around. I'll dance like a wild man. You know, it's just, <laughs> I tell you, we was talking about the children of Israel a while ago. They're standing over there against the Red Sea. They didn't see no way out. But the Lord made a way whenever he dried up the Red Sea. Nothing like that ever happened before. They didn't know what to expect. How the way we're going to get across the sea? You got any boats or canoes, anybody? You know? They didn't know how they was going to get out. But whenever they stood on the other side, they had a whole different attitude. Well, praise God, you know? But over the there, you know, they was panicking. They was fretting on the other side. They was fretting and panicking. And they was murmuring and complaining. Did I mention that about the definition of patience? Who heard said no murmur <laughs> or complaining. But you know, they rejoice that praise God on the other side. But you know what? That, that praise was short lived. The first trial they run into after that, the patience went out the window. What are we going to do now? Anybody got anything to eat? Anybody bring any sandwiches? Anybody got any water in their, in their canteen? You know, we're, we're, we're going to get some water to drink. We don't know. Barbara didn't complain. The Lord went away again. 
And you'll find it in the record. In the record, it's forever so in heaven. Every time they had a need, he provided it. Their clothes didn't wear out. There wasn't no supermarkets or malls out there where they could run down and buy a new pair of shoes or a, or a new coat or, or whatever. Uh, there wasn't, they didn't have any maps or compasses to know which way to go, but they had a pillar of fire and a cloud to lead them, tell them when to stop and when to go. <laughs> their clothes didn't wear out and their shoes didn't wear out. Right. Hallelujah. But I just, I guess I'm closed. I just, I didn't know exactly which way I was going to go with that, but I thank God for what he gave me on it. I want to take it to my heart. I want to walk in it. I want to walk in it. Yes, amen. I want to be able to hope in the, was the first Peter partaker of the fruit, so I, I want to walk in that by the grace and mercy of Almighty God. Amen. And I pray that you do too. Yes. I know we got some good people in here, good people of faith. Thank you. And I know everybody's got a good heart. And I just pray that we'd be able to Uphold one another in prayer. Love one another. Don't give any occasion to the adversary. Right. Because whenever there's unity in the faith, there's power. Holy there's power in the things that we endeavor to do. Yes. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Being led by the Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody this morning feel like you'd like for us to all pray? Pray with you or uh, have any needs that we might could pray about, anything of that nature? Could we sing rule over my soul? Could we sing rule over my soul as a congregation? You want to lead us with that? I don't know it. Rule over my soul. Rule over my soul. Josh, you want to come, come up and pass off the plate? <clears throat> Somebody pray over this besides me. Would you? 